All right, welcome back to Overtime Arcade. I'm Charlie, and today we've got the house lights turned up here in the basement because I wanted to show you some of the Joust artwork that I've been collecting. Now, as you probably know, we're currently working to restore an original Joust arcade machine out in the garage, and this video is actually part three of that restoration series. And in addition to being a full restoration, it's also a deconversion, which means this game had been converted from what was originally a Williams Joust into another game with new artwork and new everything, and we need to strip all of that off and replace it eventually, uh, including the control panel overlay, the, um, the bezel around the monitor, and the marquee up at the top, and uh, I didn't have any of those things when I got this cabinet, so I needed to uh, collect some to uh, uh, install. Um, this is the control panel overlay that I got from this old game. You've seen this before, but I wanted to give you a closer look. Uh, you know, I needed to get a restoration here because new old stock ones are just, you know, extremely hard to find and they tend to be very brittle after 40 years. Um, and it's not like you can just, you know, take a control panel overlay off of one control panel and install it onto another. So that wasn't an option. But uh, yeah, I got this great uh, reproduction uh, from this old game. Uh, I did a ton of research and theirs seemed to be by far the most accurate and the most detailed, even with these, I don't know what the technical term is for the artwork, but these sort of uh, dots instead of a, a gradient from orange to, uh, to yellow. Um, and they had it in stock, which is not always the case with this old game. They're often, you know, back ordered, and it takes a while to get what you uh, get what you want. Which is currently, I, I just recently ordered a, um, a stencil set for the Miss Pac-Man project, and uh, I don't expect it uh, for a while, which is fine. But yeah, really excited about getting this uh, control panel overlay installed uh, on the cabinet as soon as I figure out and fix everything that's going on with that control panel, as you've seen in in previous videos. Coming over to the marquee. Uh, so this is something that I got from my, uh, Michael Mater in the, uh, uh, the Texas Warehouse group on Facebook. Uh, this is an original Plexi uh, Joust uh, marquee. Um, it's in pretty good shape. You know, it's got some tape up here at the top uh, and a couple of stickers that we'll have to remove. Um, but in, you know, to me in really nice condition and I absolutely got a great deal on it. So thank you, Michael, for that. Um, so really excited to get this on and, and get it lit behind. You know, again, as you saw the uh, original marquee light, you know, the sort of fluorescent bulb, that whole setup has been messed up. So we'll be, we'll be fixing that at some point. And then, yeah, we'll get this, we'll get this original marquee on the cabinet. Uh, and just for fun, here's the uh, NES version of Joust. And coming over to the bezel, uh, here's an original glass monitor bezel uh, that would have come on the cabinet. It's even got the original, this is a, a paper sort of instruction card that they tape uh, to the inside. Uh, Williams taped those to the inside of the, uh, the bezels. I've got one just like it on my Robotron here. Uh, I got this um, bezel from Wade Lanham on the Claw Forum. So thank you, Wade, for selling this to me. Again, great price. This is in really good condition, you know, as happens with many of these marquees, there's been a little bit of paint flaking. Uh, Wade actually repaired this previously. I think he did quite a, quite a good job, so I'll be proud to have this on my cabinet. So uh, yeah, but we've still got a ways to go before we'll be able to do that sort of thing. Uh, there's a couple of things that I want to do, I want to accomplish in this video, which is part three again of the restoration series. Um, first and foremost, I want to strip all that black and red paint off of the cabinet and uh, see what's hiding underneath. Hopefully we can restore the original stenciled artwork uh, that you know Williams uh, painted onto the sides of the cabinet. And uh, once we do that, the other thing I want to do is install new leg levelers uh, on the bottom of the cabinet, the base of the cabinet, uh, so that we can uh, stand it up and move it around and not have to worry about messing up the uh, sides and back of the cabinet itself. So uh, if that sounds like a plan, let's go. Overtime. Okay, we're out here in the garage and I wanna start getting this paint stripped off the sides of the joust cabinet and hopefully be able to recover the original stenciled artwork. 
Um, so you've seen me do this before on the Miss Pac-Man if you've watched those videos. Um, you know, we have to be kind of careful here as we strip the paint off because essentially what we've got is a wooden cabinet uh, that originally had stenciled artwork, uh, whether it was Midway with uh, Pac-Man or uh, Williams with Joust. So there was stenciled artwork uh, with, I'm assuming, oil-based paint from, you know, the early 80s. And at some point, an operator came and painted over it with uh, presumably latex paint. Um, looking at the, uh, the cabinet itself, I think originally it was painted over with this sort of brownish, orangish, uh, uh, red paint here. Uh, and then the sticker, the, the, the SNK Street Smart side art was applied to that. And then they like painted around that decal to make the rest of the cabinet black, kind of looking, I think they kind of masked it off or like just carefully painted around, uh, the side art decal. So we've got two layers of paint here that we want to take off. And we want to be very gentle so that we can recover and restore the original stenciled artwork, uh, which is great. Um, you know, if we didn't care about, you know, saving, rescuing that artwork, our artwork that's underneath, we could have just a, you know, a, a more heavy duty stripper like a citrus strip or, or something even, you know, more harsh and take it straight down to the wood and do it all over again. Uh, I tried to recover uh, the artwork from the Ms. Pac-Man, which is also stenciled or was originally stenciled. Um, but, you know, and I was able to get all that black paint off, but unfortunately the artwork was too damaged to recover. So we're going to have to, you know, sand that down to wood and uh, redo that stenciling with, with paint when it warms up. But I'm hoping uh, that we won't have to do that with this joust. And if you saw in the previous video, we can kind of make the outline of some of the stenciling, you know, through these layers of paint. I'm hoping we can strip this red and black paint off and just maybe do some touch-ups uh, to recover the original joust side art. So I'm gonna use the same technique that I did before with the Ms. Pac-Man. Um, we lay down some uh, paper towel and I like to use the, the Viva brand, sort of, you know, it's more like a cloth, uh, nice and thick. Uh, we're gonna completely soak that with 91% isopropyl alcohol that you can get from any, you know, grocery store or, or uh, pharmacy. Uh, and then we're gonna cover it up with uh, plastic wrap and this is just cheap sort of store brand saran wrap. And we're gonna let that sit for several hours. I don't love the fact that the, the sun is beating down on it right now, but uh, those clouds should cover it up soon. We're gonna let this sit for several hours and hopefully that will bubble up the, uh, uh, the black paint and then we can wipe it right off and just have our original artwork uh, there. So you've seen me do this before, but I'm gonna go ahead and uh, get to town. We'll cover it up with the paper towel, we'll, we'll soak it in isopropyl, and then we'll cover all of that, kind of seal it with the plastic wrap to let the uh, the uh, ice purple alcohol do its work. All right, how does that look? So that paper towel is completely saturated with about, I don't know, one and a half bottles of that uh, isopropyl alcohol. So each bottle is 32 ounces, so what's that? 48 ounces of uh, isopropyl, nice and soaked. Some of it's dripping down. I put some paper towel down to, to catch it. Uh, worst thing it'll do is maybe strip the, the original black paint off the cabinet, which we can always redo, that's no problem. I tried to, you know, soak the paper towel as much as possible, as much as it'll hold. Some of it's, you know, pooled, which is probably okay. I've got some air pockets, which I don't love, but it's hard to, it's hard to get those out with the, uh, with the plastic wrap. Here's a big one. But uh, yeah, we're gonna let this sit for, I don't know, six or so hours. Uh, I'm gonna try to block the sunlight, just so I don't know how that's gonna, affect anything dried out fast or whatever. And uh, yeah, we'll come back in about six hours and uh, see what we got. And we're back. It's uh, been about six hours. 
Um, I think I probably could have let it go for longer, but it's getting cold out here. It's currently, well, it's still 42 in the garage, but it's gonna get cold soon. And uh, I don't wanna let this go all night. Um, you know, cause I am, like I said, really trying to preserve and recover the original joust stenciled side art underneath all this paint. And uh, you know, I suppose it's kind of like a haircut, right? You can always take more off, but you can't put it back on. So, uh, and it looks like the paint is coming off pretty easily in these little sort of test patches that I did by kind of just moving, moving the uh, paper towel under the uh, shrink wrap with my hand. So I guess this is the moment of truth. Keep your fingers crossed. I'd really like to avoid doing multiple uh, cabinet restencils. So uh, here goes nothing. Paper towels are definitely still wet. So hopefully this stuff will just come right off. All right, oh, I see it. I see it. Okay. You get some of this uh, other paper towels here. All right. Okay. I can see the artwork. Can you see it in the camera? Yeah, okay, you can see the ostrich head sticking out. Uh, the black paint's coming right off. Uh, the red paint underneath it uh, as a separate layer is uh, a bit, not more stubborn, but uh, might have to do two passes of this, which I'm not worried about. Man, this red paint is so thick. Let's come around here. I'm trying to avoid getting it all over me because this is a just a absolutely disgusting mess. But yeah, I, uh, I don't want to jinx myself, but look at that. Man, this red paint is just, can you see how thick it is? Look at that. Just, I don't know, how else to describe it other than goopy. It's just goops and goops and goops of red paint. I think the red paint is on much thicker than the black paint. So let's get this. Ugh, gross. But uh, so far I am optimistic. Look at this. I don't think the brown is coming up as I'm sort of wiping it. But this is disgusting. Even worse than, even worse than the mist pack because there's so much more paint here. It's almost like it's, you know, back to being in liquid form again. This uh, red paint actually. All right, let me really go to town on this. All right, here's how I'm making out so far. So this red paint is coming off, but it's just so thick. You can see I was trying to use that uh, plastic scraper, definitely a plastic scraper, not a metal scraper, uh, to take some of it off. Uh, and it's coming off, it's just a lot of work. Using up tons of paper towels, I have to keep changing my gloves because it looks like, oh my God, looks like a murder scene. But uh, 
We're down to the brown paint. This is brown paint. This is brown paint from a joust. And this is what we want to see. So uh, what I'm doing now is just sort of coming back. I got a spray bottle uh, with that nice 91% um, isopropyl. And uh, I'm just cleaning up this loose stuff and it's, it's slow going. So I'm just gonna keep at it. And then uh, I'll come back in a moment. And uh, hopefully you'll see a nice clean side of joust stenciled artwork. Okay, this is it, the big reveal. Huh. Are you ready for this? If I had a, uh, a special effects budget, this is where I would say, drum roll please. Are you ready for this? Here we go. Look at that. <laughs> It looks great. Oh my gosh, it really, really looks amazing. I am so happy and so relieved that this came out like that. Um, yeah, I'm just staring, uh, I keep going back and forth between looking at the camera and, and looking at the, the cabinet itself. And uh, oh, I am so happy about this, especially after what happened with the Ms. Pac-Man where, you know, initially, when the paint started coming off, I, I had some, you know, some hope. It gave me some optimism. Uh, but then we found all that damage at the bottom on, on one side and the, and the front. But uh, yeah, um, just look at how great this Joust side art looks. Um, the colors are great. Um, yeah, I, uh, let's, let's take a closer look together. Um, let's see. So I'm not too worried about the bottom. Um, you know, it's a little chewed up. We're gonna have to bondo that uh, and repair the bottom, uh, the sides and the front. Um, so we'll, you know, we'll uh, touch up the paint down here and blend it in as best we can. Uh, coming up the side, you know, there's some work on the edges that I'm gonna have to do. Uh, again, touch ups, you know, here and there, but that's probably original wear from when the cabinet was uh, on location. Uh, I'm assuming it was on location. Uh, taking a closer look. Uh, you know, we've got some spots of damage, but this actually doesn't look too bad, especially because kind of just the sort of skeletal design of the, uh, of the ostrich itself. Um, you know, some spots here, you know, there's, there's some battle scars, which is, you know, authentic, right? This is what things are like in the real world. Sort of a, a screw hole here. I'm not sure what's going on, uh, with that, but, uh, we'll figure that out. Obviously the Williams logo. Uh, and this is a little, I don't know if this is vinyl, but a, a plastic sticker that had the sort of registered trademark logo. Uh, sort of weird that, you know, Williams did that as a sticker and didn't incorporate it into the, the stencil design, but um, it's still there, it's intact, but unfortunately the ink of the sort of a, you know, an R with a circle around it for the registered trademark symbol. Uh, unfortunately, um, the, most of the ink has come off that sticker, but that's, that's not a big deal. Uh, coming up here, we've got a gouge over here. We'll replace you know, some some uh, paint lifted there. Uh, and what's interesting to me is, I guess these Williams uh, side art um, stenciled side art or uh, stencil cabinet side arts had like a layer of wax that was on applied on top of the paint to sort of uh, protect it. You know, obviously not a bad idea. And that has come up in some spots, uh, but I'm not too worried about it. But you know, I'll do some research. If that's the case, you know, once we get this sort of, you know, uh, in the best possible condition, we touch up a bunch of this stuff, maybe I'll reapply um, some, uh, uh, some new wax on top. I don't know what the best way to, to do that is. If you know anything about that, please, you know, let me know. But yeah, coming around again, some battle scars, um, nothing too major, nothing that we won't be able to touch up. Uh, there's a couple of spots both here uh, around the edge and uh, up here, the top corner, where we're gonna have to come back with a, um, a magic eraser and, and take off some of that uh, black paint that was a bit more stubborn. So coming around, here's the head of the ostrich. There's sort of a little patch here that we'll, we'll touch up. I think this was an aggressive, or a, a, a stubborn spot that I was a little aggressive with, with the, um, with the uh, paper towel. But yeah, all I was doing was, you know, using the paper towel and a lot of elbow grease and patience uh, and spraying it with the um, isopropyl alcohol to sort of keep it wet and just working it off, sort of wiping it off, swiping it off, coming back. You know, I used, you know, more than a whole sort of double roll of, of paper towel um, 
But uh, yeah, and there's these bolts that hold the, uh, the lower back door hinge on. Um, yeah, some gouges, some battle scars, but overall I am uh, just super, super happy with how this came out. Um, you know, if both sides are like this, then, you know, we don't have to re-stencil uh, this cabinet. I was actually looking at some joust stencils today that uh, now I'm not going to have to buy, which is always nice. So uh, yeah, I'm going to um, let this sort of dry out overnight uh, and then probably tomorrow I'll get set up, I'll flip the cabinet on the other side and uh, I'll uh, repeat the process on that side. I won't show you um, uh, uh, me putting that, uh, the paper towel and isopropyl on. Uh, I'll show you what it looks like when it's done. Maybe I'll show you the sort of initial reveal as I take off that paper towel. But um, yeah, really, really happy about that. Um, one more thing that I do want to show you is uh, taking off this back door because when I flip it on the uh, other side, while we're doing that, I am going to want to replace the uh, um, leg levelers down at the bottom like I was pointing out before. So let me get the um, tripod set up for a good angle on that and uh, I'll see you in a sec. Okay, so taking this off is really simple. I've just got my uh, 7 16 wrench uh, from before. Uh, there's three sort of bolts that I need to remove. The first is just what holds the grounding strap in place. So we'll just We'll just drop the wrench. Here you go Just loosen that up Take that off. Wow, this is kind of Beat to heck and it really just kind of like tucked around it, but uh, that's fine. It was making electrical contact for the grounding and we'll Pop that back on. Uh, and then there's two carriage bolts that hold the um, uh, the back door hinge onto the cabinet. So I'm going to again loosen these. And hopefully we can do this without the whole thing falling on my head, although that might make for an interesting video. All right, these nuts are coming right off. And I should just be able to um, use, let me go grab a hammer real quick. What I need to do is uh, knock those carriage bolts loose because um, they come down. It's sort of a, I don't know, kind of a strange uh, angle how they're held on, but you know, it's my fault for suspending the cabinet on these uh, um, saw horses. So let me try knocking it loose while holding on to the door. All right, so that's one. That was actually easier than I thought it would be. Two. Oh, okay. So those are the major, <laughs> this is more than I thought it was. So let me just get these carriage bolts out of here. And man, those, uh, those washers are painted on real strong. So there's actually uh, one, two, three, four, five screws that I also need to remove to get this hinge off of the cabinet. So let me grab my screwdriver with the nut driver on it, which is really just the Phillips bit taken out. And uh, take these off real quick. Okay, and here's the last one that I am gonna hold the cab or hold the door so it doesn't fall on me. And there we are. Feels like we're free, and and we are. So yeah, okay. The lower back door is off. Just looking up here at this. Uh, these washers are. On tight. I don't know if I can pry them off. Yeah, they're just, here we go. Only gouge the cabinet a tiny bit. There we go. Okay. So we've got our, we got it off, right? So it'll make it easier for us. Let me show you 
to uh, get in here and it's going to be dark and spooky. It'll be easier for us to get into the bottom of the cabinet and see if you can see daylight coming through that hole. Yeah, that's the hole where the bolt for the leg leveler uh, comes through. So we'll be able to uh, get that in there. Although these other two are going to be a pain down to the bottom and the top. So anyhow, uh, let me, uh, through the magic of television, we'll fast forward to uh, tomorrow uh, when we start to strip the paint off the other side and uh, install those new leg levelers. Hey, it's the next day and uh, I've had this second side of the cabinet soaking in the isopropyl alcohol for a good eight hours now and I am ready to uh, take it off and hopefully be greeted by another beautiful side of stencil joust side art. So I got hung up with some stuff today and I wasn't actually able to um, install the, the new leg levelers, but I did run out to the hardware store and I think I've got everything I need now to make that happen. Uh, so we will, we will do that uh, at the end of this episode, but uh, not before we uh, take all these uh, paper towels off. Uh, sorry if my, my voice is starting to get real hoarse. Uh, you know, doing one video each day for 12 days is a lot of talking on camera and a lot of talking into the microphone, doing voiceovers for shorts and that sort of thing. And my, my voice is kind of shot uh, and I was just getting over a pretty bad cold that was going around. So uh, yeah, without further ado, let's, uh, let's see what we got. Oh, this red paint. I was hoping that by leaving it on longer, that the red paint would come off more easily, but it's still just thick and goopy. Man. Um, but we'll get this all off. There's that ostrich head. Let's just come right down the cabinet. I'll apply some pressure and hopefully that will help just pull as much of the red paint off as possible. Oh, there's just so much of it. This paint was put on so thick. Um, I know a lot of people have been liking these videos in particular, getting the paint off. They've got their own cabinets that they're are, uh, looking at doing the same thing. And while I do really like this technique, you know, of course, your mileage may vary, right? Every situation is going to be different. Um, the paint that the, you know, that was applied, ugh, the, uh, how thickly it was applied, you know, the quality of it, there's just so many things that are going to be different each time. So, you know, experiment and see what works the best for you. Uh, hopefully you learn a little something from me and maybe I can help you, uh, you know, discover a technique or a method or an approach that perhaps you wouldn't have tried, but you know, everyone's results are going to be different because everyone's situation is different. Everyone's cabinet is different. Yeah. The extra eight hours really did not do much to make this easier to come off. Oh, look at all this. Oh, <laughs> This is so messy and disgusting, but this is, you know, letting this soak for six to eight hours is certainly a lot less work than going over every inch with a magic eraser and just, yeah, I'm not one to shy away from, you know, having to put elbow grease into it, but hey, if we can find sh sh shortcuts that make things easier and go faster, why not take them as long as we're not compromising on the results at the end. I'm running out of my cheap paper towel. I might have to start using my good paper towel. Okay. All right. So, you know, we got about the same, same results that we did on the other side. The black paint comes off nice and easy. The red paint is sort of liquefied, but it's so thick and it's just a disgusting mess. 
Uh, I'm gonna do the same technique that I used uh, yesterday. I'll work from the top down this side, just cause I wanna have as much sort of, um, have the red, you know, avoid the red paint getting sort of solid again before I strip it off. So yeah, let me go and do that. And uh, I'll come back and show you what it looks like at the end. And here we are, another beautiful side of stencil joust artwork. Oh, a lot of hard work, but uh, yeah, just look how nice that is. Yeah, again, obviously the bottoms, you know, chewed up a little bit, but we'll bond with that and patch the paint, feather it in, get that looking nice. Here's that beautiful ostrich with our mounted knight and his trusty lance. Uh, we've even still got the, well, for the most part, the ink on the uh, registered trademark sticker on the Williams logo. You know, there's uh, little bits and bobs uh, left to do that, you know, when we come back in and recover the paint and touch it up, we'll take care of all that. Um, and yeah, for the most part, I would say this side came out uh, about as good, if not a little bit better than the other. There's, I think, you know, generally speaking, fewer gouges and kind of marks, uh, certainly in the, um, the stenciling itself. You know, back there, we've got some battle scars that we'll fill in and uh, touch up the paint. And uh, yeah, the... Um, that wax layer, whatever it is, came up a little bit again, but uh, I'm not too worried about that. That's really just there to protect it, sort of like a, a blade of armor. The only thing I'm a little bit concerned with is I do have a bit of peeling uh, up here uh, towards the, around the head. Uh, for the most part, it's in the, it's in the brown, which is easy enough to touch up, um, but there's some in the, the yellow parts of the neck. Um, but uh, I'm not too worried about that. I think we'll be able to knock all that off and then patch it, touch it up uh, fairly well. I should be able to match these colors relatively easily. Nothing too exotic here. Um, but yeah, I'm really happy about this. Um, so yeah, I've definitely decided that we are going to uh, preserve this original artwork. I'm not going to redo the stencils on this cabinet. Uh, we will do that with the Ms. Pac-Man obviously, but uh, I'm not even gonna order the stencils for uh, joust because you know they're not particularly cheap and uh, I'm not going to use them. So yeah, it's late. I think it's nearly two o'clock in the morning. Um, uh, I'm going to pack it in for the night, but uh, I'll come back at it tomorrow and we will install new leg levelers at the bottom of this cabinet and then wrap up this video. So stay tuned for that. Okay, it's the following afternoon and the weather is absolutely beautiful today here in Virginia. Mid 50s, sunny, uh, it's great. Uh, almost makes me wish I was uh, uh, in a painting mood or prepared to paint that uh, Ms. Pac-Man, but uh, we've got a lot of prep work to do and I just ordered the stencils, which um, probably won't be delivered for uh, a few months at least. So. Uh, I want to attack the bottom of this joust and put new leg levelers on and put these sort of blocking plates in um, with the, uh, the T-nuts needed to hold the leg levelers. First thing I actually want to do is just clean this up a little bit because it's filthy. So I'm going to blast it with my air hose, wipe it down with a dry cloth to get all the loose stuff, and then I'll probably hit it with some simple green um, to finish, uh, finish that off. Uh, also, I think I'm going to try to knock a bunch of the sort of loose pieces of wood here that I'm gonna have to replace with Bondo. I kind of want to leave as much of the veneer in place as possible. We can kind of clamp and glue that down uh, and then Bondo over it to smooth it over. But underneath, I'll just take as much loose stuff as I can off. Uh, a lot cleaner now, got a good uh, surface to work from and knocked a bunch of this loose stuff out of the way. Uh, I figure if the uh, air hose can knock it loose, then it probably has to come off the cabinet. Um, so yeah, yeah, let's take this original cleat, maybe you would call it, uh, off. I have this uh, nice little mini uh, pry bar, I guess it's called a uh, bear claw from Vaughn. 
It says made in Japan. Um, so let's see if we can come in here and kind of pry this thing off. I think it's just got some staples or brad nails that are kind of holding it on. So it shouldn't be, shouldn't be too bad to coax it off. And that cracking is the sound of the, the cleat sort of coming apart, which is fine. Um, I guess I probably could have left this, um, but since I'm putting three other new ones on, I want to replace all of them just so that, you know, any variation in, uh, in height is sort of accounted for. And there's just a little bit of remaining parts on this. Okay, that should give us a nice even surface to work from. So uh, we can take a look at what's going on here, sort of use this as a, a template or an example for what we're gonna reproduce. I've already measured this and it's uh, two and a half inches square uh, with a hole dead in the middle, uh, some staples holding it on, and that's a, a T-nut, a threaded T-nut, uh, hammered into uh, the cleat. Uh, and this is what the leg levelers are supposed to mount into. So. Based on the way that came off, I'm also assuming that it was glued on originally. So we'll do that too. Uh, I do have staples, but instead of using staples, I'm gonna use screws just to give it even a more secure connection mounting uh, to the base of the, the cabinet. You know, these things are, I guess, notorious for ripping off uh, the leg levelers on Williams cabinets. And maybe with the, the glue and screws, uh, we'll be a little bit more uh, secure, so. Uh, yeah, this is what I'm looking to reproduce. Uh, I've got some scrap three quarter inch plywood, which is what this uh, is made from. I've got a, a scrap piece of uh, three quarter ply uh, from a previous project. I don't know if it was Tempest maybe or, or the Donkey Kong from years ago. Um, and uh, yeah, this hole right here is actually a 7 uh, which was like the only uh, size of drill bit that I didn't have. So I had to run out to Ace Hardware and get a new one. So if we come over here, I've done a bit of prep work. All right, so here's my piece of scrap plywood. Um, I've measured it uh, roughly. I mean, you don't have to be absolutely perfectly precise, but I measured uh, two and a half inches square on both sides uh, and I used an angle square to um, find the center of each of each piece. Uh, we're going to do this in stages. I'll do the first two and then I'll do the second two. Uh, I want to drill straight down through the middle. Again, you don't have to be precise since, you know, we're going to align the holes uh, with the uh, with the leg leveler. Um, so here's the uh, 7 16 drill bit that I got. Uh, it's a Brad Point drill bit, so it should make for a more uh, accurate hole. Um, you know, ideally you'd want to use a uh, a drill press for this. I don't have one. I actually had the opportunity to inherit one for free uh, years ago, but at the time, uh, I think it was like 15 plus years ago, I didn't have a house with a, um, a basement or a garage uh, to set that drill press up, so I missed out on that. So yeah, I'm just gonna come through um, with my drill and uh, hopefully go straight right down through this hole. So we'll line up the brad point right on the center and uh, sender. And for number two. Okay, I'm gonna dip the uh, sawdust into my trash box right here. And we'll take a look at what we got. So that looks all right. Um, I figured drilling the holes now was, would be uh, easier than trying to do them once I've cut the, the cleats down to size. So I've got um, 
some replacement uh, T-nuts here. These are uh, 3 8 inch uh, 16, uh, is that gauge or no, it's the threading, um, 16 threading, and uh, by 7 16 long. So let's pop this sucker out and kind of just dry fit it. Yeah, that looks like it'll go through just fine and there's enough meat for the teeth to grab onto. Um, so step two is to cut it. Well, let's come down here to the ground. All right, and this is my sort of mini portable table saw that I got years ago for, was it for the Tempest maybe that I got this? Uh, and this is great. I don't know what's a, a good angle for you to see. Uh, I love this little thing. Uh, it's a DeWalt, so it wasn't exactly cheap, but uh, I've got a ton of use out of it, and it folds up nice and small and gets out of the way when you're done. So let's plug this in. And I, I've got the sort of uh, lines drawn, but I'm really going to use the fence uh, on the on the table saw to control uh, the shape and size of things. Uh, I think I want to start actually by cutting lengthwise uh, into the board and that'll make it easier rather than trying to hold, you know, a little three inch piece of wood. Um, I'll be able to work with the, the length of the board to uh, keep myself away from it and keep things safe. So uh, yeah, I've got glasses on, gloves on. So uh, yeah, we should, uh, should be able to get this going good. There's my first cut, looks pretty good. Uh, I'm actually gonna flip it over uh, to do the other side so that I don't have to change where the board is or where the, the saw is positioned. All right, that looks good. I'm happy with uh, where the kerf is. And uh, now we're gonna rip it this way and uh, cut our pieces free. Did you know you were coming to the Overtime Arcade Woodworking Workshop today? Try to say that three times fast. Woodworking, wo <laughs> Woodworking Workshop. Okay, unplugged for safety. So yeah, here are our first two, whoa, put those anywhere. Our first two cleats. Uh, let's line it up with our original one and uh, looks pretty good. Okay, so next thing I wanna do is Let's put these T-nuts in. So we'll kind of get this lined up. So here's what we're looking at. Uh, just like on the original, the teeth of the T-nut go into the cleat from above. So it was mounted into the cabinet like this. So that's what it's gonna look like from below. So the, sort of 
sleeve of the T-nut fits right into, let's see if I can put this on the ground so you can see, fits right into the hole that we just cut. And I've got a, a mallet and I'm just gonna knock it in there, see if that works. All right, that looks pretty good, all right? We'll mount it from below, and we will glue it on as well. I don't know if I can sink that. I really can't sink it in any farther. So let's do the second one here with another T-nut. So it's the same thing with this one. We'll just line up the, like the sleeve of the T-nut into the hole, squeeze it in a little bit, and then drive it in with the mallet. All right, that one looks pretty good. And here's how the leg leveler will kind of just thread on into that. And then there's already a hole, corresponding hole in the bottom of the cabinet where the sort of length of the leg leveler can go right in. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut the drill and cut the other two cleats, and then I'll come back and we'll mount them on the cabinet. All right, I've got all four of my new cleats made up and I'm ready to mount them onto the cabinet. So again, we've got these existing holes, which is where the shank or whatever you want to call it of the uh, leg leveler will be able to move up and down because you, know, you can adjust the, the height of these to level them and, and even them out. Um, and uh, to mount it into the cabinet, uh, again, rather than using those uh, staples. I've got some number eight um, wood screws, uh, an inch and a quarter long, and I'm going to use four of them. So this should be nice and secure. And to take it even a step further, I'm going to use some wood glue to secure it even better. So glued and screwed, as they say. If I can get this glue open. There we go. So I'm going to apply it, if I can get that in camera, onto the cleat. Nice healthy amount. We're not going to have to see this. All right. And uh, just spread this around just a little bit with this sliver. I am far far, far, far from a woodworking expert. I'm always more comfortable working on the electronics. Uh, and I think it was the, I was recently listening to an old episode of the Corn Rejects podcast, and I believe it was Ian sort of was sharing a sentiment that, you know, when you're working on electronics, you kind of know if it's working or not, right? You can test it, you know, when it's done. Uh, but when you're working on cabinet stuff, it's like, well, when do you decide that you're done? Because, you know, you can always be better or whatnot. So, all right. So that's in there good. It kind of snugs right into the corner of the cabinet. Uh, let me take these screws and send them, send them in. Let's see, maybe in the corners would be good. Maybe I should have, shoot, maybe I should have pre-drilled these. Maybe, what is it? You go in reverse a little bit first to prevent splitting. All right, now let's try it. All right, what was I doing?
All right, that's pretty good. Let's set the other three corners. We should be good to go. So again, I'm going in reverse a little bit to start. I don't think I actually did that the first one. <laughs> and now going in. Okay. Let's see if that first one is as snug as I want it to be. Okay. Two more screws for this bad boy. Again, going in reverse to start. And now going in. Okay, ooh, that one went in a little bit deeper. Well, I did that a little too strong and broke the screw off. So uh, I guess I'm not too worried about that though. We can throw an extra one in. Again, no one's ever gonna see this. Oh. But uh, my OCD is pinging, pinging hard right now. Let's get this last corner. probably be okay even without it, but just to be extra whatever, let's throw it in. Okay, consider it mounted. That's a little ugly. We'll never see it. And we can unscrew this out because obviously we're not going to have the leg leveler flush to the bottom. Come on. There we go. We want it high enough so that the, uh, the edges of the cabinet, the sides of the cabinet are not in contact with the ground. That looks pretty good. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and mount the other three cleats onto the cabinet the exact same way. And then I'll come back when I'm done and we'll wrap up this video. And we're back. I was able to successfully install the three other replacement cleats. Everything went in just fine. Uh, I didn't break any other screws like I did on that first one, but I'm not worried about that. No one's ever gonna see it. And we've got these, uh, these things nice and solid in there. It'll be a great foundation for those leg levelers to uh, screw into. Um, everything was just fine. The only thing that was a little bit different about the front is uh, they're not flush all the way to the front panel, I guess the kick plate uh, of the cabinet, kind of like they are in the back. They're right, right in that corner on both sides. Uh, but here on the front, um, they're mounted about uh, three quarters of an inch offset from that uh, front panel. But uh, yeah, I'm really happy with how this came out. Uh, this will be great to be able to, you know, stand the cabinet up and not have to have it drag along the sides uh, on the floor. I did remove the leg levelers uh, from the cleats just so that, you know, just in case there's any glue in any of these holes, I don't have to deal with uh, uh, anything like that. Although, I don't know, just, would glue stick to metal? Who knows? But anyway, uh, I think that'll do it for this episode of Overtime Arcade. As always, thank you so much for all of the support. You know, 
everything you guys do for me, the likes, the comments, the subscriptions, you know, sharing it across the internet with people you think might enjoy it. That means so much to me. I've been completely and consistently blown away with the incredible response that uh, I've gotten to this channel. So uh, thank you as always for that. And uh, yeah, I'm Charlie. This has been Overtime Arcade. I hope you enjoyed it and we'll see you next time. Oh, 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 overtime! overtime.